Listen, if you can survive a narcissist, you must be a wizard bitch because this ish is not for the week. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. What's good? What's popping in the hood, honey? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the video. So this, as you can see the title, this is called Surviving a Narcissist. And I, I kind of say that to be sarcastic because you can't really survive a narcissist. So these are the red flags, things to not to do if you are in a relationship with a narcissistic person. No judgment here because it's hard leaving narcissist relationships because they thrive off having that control over you or just having that emotional manipulation over your mind. Okay, so narcissists don't think nothing is wrong with them. Good luck, okay? You can tell them what the problem is. Because you know your narcissist parent, boyfriend, girlfriend so well, you try to do everything in a way to make them not feel so offended because you know one wrong word that they don't like or one thing that you say about them that they don't agree of in a slightest way can flip everything. So what like you can do to soften the holes up a little bit is start off by saying what you appreciate about them. Like it can be the smallest deed. Hey, like I appreciate you for, you know, washing my car like the other day. I noticed the good deed you did here, but I feel like you don't show me enough affection that's how you kind of come tame these bitches down because if you notice a narcissist will never get to the root problem so what they'll do they never have time to talk or they'll just say a quick word just to let you know that like they heard you but they will never give you full communication even if you ask for it most narcissists do not want to talk they'll either say hey like why we gotta talk right now everything going good like they say things like that or I'm busy, like we'll talk later. Knowing that later will never come. Like even if you remind them, it's just always gonna be a run around, a run around with a narcissist. So this is where it gets tricky, girl. They thrive off having that emotional hold towards you. That's their main motive. Like by you confronting them about a problem and they pretty much disregard it or have an excuse of why they can't talk right now, that's when most of us make this one mistake is that we start showing emotion. Sometimes we'll get angry. Sometimes we will curse. Or sometimes it gets to the point where like we get so fed up with keep, you know, repeating ourselves and not getting the things that we ask for. Whatever you do, do not throw the remote. Do not cuss them out. Do not do anything that may seem crazy because if you do any of that, it's done. If you think you finna get a resolution to what they did or the problem that you confronted them about because like the whole argument is gonna be about what you did nah because you acting crazy like you want to throw the remote like i'm using that as an example narcissists will react to how you react off something they they did you know what i'm saying like it's really a mind fuck thing narcissists notice if they are losing you emotionally the highs are super high the lows are super low. Girl, it's no in between. Narcissists know if they are losing you, if you are moving on in like the slightest way. Once y'all are at an all time low, what they do, they go above and beyond to put the relationship in good terms again, which is why the highs are super high. At this point, they are losing you right now. So they're gonna try to go above and beyond, at perfect, might tell you the things that you've been wanting to hear from them. Like, I don't know if some of y'all know this, in some like narcissistic relationships, you wanna get that top of the dime special treatment when y'all are on bad terms it's never when y'all chilling nothing is going on you know you know pretty much on good terms i guess you can say when things are smooth everybody is getting along you never get that special treatment like you never get the random flowers or the compliments and the lovey doviness only when you are on bad terms which is fucked up because you know as humans like we want that gesture we want to know that's you on like a regular like why do we have to be on bad terms for you to be super nice or just super romantic you know how like i told you when a narcissist want that emotional control over you 
what like they do is they keep egging you on it's into the point where like you can't take it but they not gonna talk about how what caused you to get to that point i know it's hard but if you show them any little emotion they will use that shit against you to the t instead of you talking about the situation at hand they're going to talk about how like you threw the remote and that's going to be the pinpoint of like the conversation so if you are planning to get any type of resolution at that moment or that day for it get about it even if you try to bring it up like hey like let's communicate the problem is going to be how you reacted to what they did how like you got emotional and that's how they tame you because at the end of the day in like their mind like you doing it getting mad and angry they still know they got that emotional control over you. So that's why I say when it comes to those situations, just chill and just be like, oh, I right, and plan like your exit. Most women move on in their head. It really takes a lot of power to get to that point because like I said, like they are so manipulative and just evil ass bitches. You start to think about the high highs and the fact that they go above and beyond to get back to that high point you start thinking about those times and it end up outweighing the lows you know what i'm saying they do love the silent treatment or to threat to leave you like you notice sometimes with a narcissist they walk out the door without saying nothing or they will give you the silent treatment deep down a narcissist is waiting for you to react they want you to react they want you to test that long paragraph that's what they want they want you to chase after them like they want you to blow their phone up that's what they want you to do never do that never fold because i'm telling you that narcissist will be thinking about you like crazy because at the end of the day they got this weird obsession with your soul they know they manipulating you they know something ain't right about their ass but they love that control over you another thing girl they would try to come for your confidence like a mug like you can be looking good they low-key hate when like you feeling yourself because if you try to lead them or if they try to leave you they don't want you to feel powerful once y'all separate if that makes sense they don't like the idea of somebody else having you they don't like the idea of you moving on without crying and going crazy over them so once they do that silent treatment shit or leave don't fall because i'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen they're gonna end up hitting you up over the most simple shit ever um i love my own pen Yo, pen, nigga, if you don't take your ass a family dollar, go get your damn pen. Like, they do shit like that. Some of them uh, act like they didn't mean to call you just so you can hear their voice. Because they know anything can trigger you into missing them or showing emotion towards them just by hearing their voice or just seeing their face. Because they said they left their damn sock on the dresser. That's one thing they never going to admit. They do that shit on purpose. So you can see them again. They want a reaction. They want some type of emotional reaction out of you. It can be you cussing them out. After a narcissist do that silent treatment, if you show them any type of emotion, boom. That's when they feel good. Like they feel like, I got you mentally. And they will continue that silent treatment until they are ready to talk. Until they want to come back around. But one thing about it, when they come back around, you will not get the resolution of what started the whole shit at hand. Y'all notice this video is going on and on. We talking about confronting a narcissist, what to do and what not to do. And out of this one thing, one problem that you wanted to confront them over, after all this happened, the silent treatment, the high highs, the low lows, they always come back as if nothing didn't happen. This is where the mind fuck and like the manipulation come in. This is why it's so dangerous talking or having a narcissistic parent or boyfriend or girlfriend because when they come back and act like nothing didn't happen, you still feel like dang i didn't get my resolution but you be kind of on edge of bringing it back up because you just happy to see them here you just enjoying their company because they have that emotional hold on you so you don't even much bring it up no more it's kind of like okay now like whatever which is fucked up 
And also, I forgot to mention, because you let everything go and you let the communication slide all the time, everything they did has added up. So you will eventually start to hate their guts, but you will be so attached. And it's so weird. You will be so attached and hate them at the same exact time. Like you love them and hate them at the same time. That's when the cycle keeps continuing. It keeps going. It keeps going. You still don't get that resolution. So it's going to be a cycle and it's going to keep lingering on because you didn't get your closure on the situation. How to survive a narcissist? I don't know. Like you really cannot survive it. And it's so crazy because tell me why I just found out it's a narcissistic disorder. Like this is some real deal diagnosis type thing. Like People can be diagnosed with this. You trying to leave a narcissist, you think it's gonna be completely over without an argument or something horrible happening. Narcissists, if they know you are 100% done, be prepared for a horrible ending. It usually never ends well. They will try to either come for you mentally, your confidence, your self-worth, or Physically, like they might try to fight you. They might try to tell your call up. I don't know because they cannot leave without a bang. If you are in a narcissistic relationship or was, I really want to hear y'all um, feedback in the comments and tell me if things I said was relatable. I kind of like doing videos on manipulative and narcissistic because i've been in a situation like that and i think it's very interesting only because it's like dang it's like people are really crazy and all oh, my feet sleeping oh my god oh all oh, my feet is for the sleep tickle wait a minute <laughs> so i will say dating a narcissist or having a narcissistic family member or something of that sort is definitely not easy and it's going to take a lot of self-worth control you really have to get to the point where you have self-worth and you stand in your power and you stick to your word because if not you're gonna be stressed out and you're gonna be mentally drained you will not make it you won't ever leave you won't ever move on or the situation won't ever get better like you have to please like you have to stand your ground the emotional manipulation from a narcissist is to tame and control your mind so you standing your ground and not budging it pisses them off but it's not even about pissing them off bro i, I can't deal with it so i will say like now i know the warning signs of a narcissist bitch you can get close to queen bitch especially at this time in my life girl I'm not playing no games with nobody. Like, you not finna control my mind. I know what it is. I know what it ain't. I have self-esteem. I'm very intelligent. And I'm, I'm, I'm beautiful, baby. What you mean, bitch? You can't, you can't control this one, baby. I'm hot. I'm in the streets, nigga. I'm in these streets. But, yes, y'all. So, if you like this video, if you want more videos like this, girl, let me know, y'all, what's good in the comments. What's good in the comments. And everything I told y'all on how to s try to survive a narcissist, bro, at the end of the day, my point is, it's too fucking much. I don't have to be on tippy toes for your raggedy ass, honey. Why do I have to be on edge and plan things strategically like, okay, let me not bring you back up because I fuck you. Stand in your power, be that chick, be that dude. All right, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Give it a like, thumbs up, um, subscribe. See you next time. Damn. Oh, okay, bye y'all.